I'd put off a Canada New England cruise for years because it seemed like not a great choice or rather there were much better choices more compelling cruises out there but now I really wish I had done it sooner cruise ships can visit so many places and while the amount of ships heading north is relatively small especially for eastern Canada it's still a destination you really shouldn't sleep on anymore I picked a seven night cruise on Royal Caribbean Serenade of the Seas that visited four ports across Maine and Nova Scotia being that I get to cruise a lot I'm always excited when I get to try something new but I really wasn't prepared for how much I would love spending time in this part of the world and it was even more eye-opening for myself because I grew up in New England so this wasn't my first foray into the area the chance to see quaint towns enjoy terrific seafood and take in nature's beauty without the Caribbean heat are really a good reason why I wanted to go north in the first place Royal Caribbean offers cruises to Canada and New England each year in the summer and early fall Cruises from New York, Boston, and sometimes other ports like Quebec or Baltimore offer visits to this region. There are short and long cruises, and it's an important segment of Royal Caribbean's Northeast itineraries. The appeal, of course, is really vibrant fall foliage, walking excursions, and lobster bakes that draw many people to this kind of cruise. From the beautiful landscape to terrific dining and welcoming people, I not only had a great cruise, I really fell in love with the area. Having come home from this cruise, there are a couple things that really stood out about the sailing that I think anybody considering this particular itinerary, if they happen to go, or if I go back myself. First of all, the weather is really hard to predict here. Now, Alaska is notorious for this, but I was really surprised by how wild the weather forecast really swung for Canada and New England. Looking at the forecast in just the last few days before the cruise, the forecast shifted a lot, and I wasn't sure if it would rain, be cold, or really hot in any of the places we were gonna visit. It wasn't until the day we set sail or so that the weather picture finally cleared up literally and figuratively. In speaking to crew members, they told us how lucky we were with weather because rain had been dominant in this particular season. The day before the cruise in Boston, there was heavy rain all day, but the next day on embarkation day, it was totally clear. In Sydney, Nova Scotia, the temperature barely creeped above 60 while we were wearing shorts in Portland, Maine because it was 75 degrees. So my advice for packing for a Canada and New England cruise is to wait just a few days before the cruise and try your best to pack for it, but be sure to bring an extra pair of shorts and rain gear just in case. Something else that surprised me about this cruise was how much I loved Maine. If you had asked me on embarkation day which ports I was most excited to visit, I would have told you any day in Canada because I thought Maine was gonna be more lackluster and familiar. As it turned out, I was totally wrong about Maine. Nova Scotia was beautiful and I enjoyed it, but I found I enjoyed Maine even more. We visited Bar Harbor and Portland, and in both cases, our ship was located right in the heart of both towns. It enabled us to see and do more with less effort. Bar Harbor's quaint town, along with Acadia National Park within a mile and a half, provided much more to see and do than I really thought. I was expecting a sleepy town with a couple of restaurants and some pretty trees. Instead, I found so many ways I could spend my day there, and I loved it all. Within 15 minutes of disembarking my tender in Bar Harbor, I already texted my wife that I wanted to move here. I was sort of serious about that. Between the small town feel and fact that it backed up against Acadia National Park, I really loved my time in Bar Harbor. Admittedly, I thought I was onto some kind of secret until I learned that like every millionaire from the Gilded Age already moved to Bar Harbor about 100 years ago. But you know what they say, good taste never goes out of style. While I doubt we're moving to Maine anytime soon, I really couldn't envision myself spending more time in Bar Harbor on some future summer vacation. Maybe I'm just a sucker for New England but it just had the vibe I was looking for. In Portland, I was also blown away. I thought Portland was gonna be kind of a throwaway port, but I really loved it because there was a great deal of dining and shopping. There's also a number of beautiful lighthouses and just about every aspect of New England you'd wanna see. If I could do the cruise over again, I would plan out more of my time in Maine in order to maximize it over there. I was pleasantly surprised by the embarkation and disembarkation process in Boston. I had heard some absolute horror stories about embarkation in Boston, namely, Long lines with no distinction between suites, crown and anchor status, or anything. As it turned out, embarkation was smoother in Boston than some of the cruise terminals in Florida. The staff had everything set up from the start, and it was clear where to go and what to do for every step. So apologies to California, but LA still holds the title as the worst embarkation experience in the US, in my opinion. I did something on this cruise that I've never done before, and that is go through the customs process in the middle of the cruise. Every cruise I've taken up till now would have the immigration process occur at the conclusion of the sailing, but this time was different. Because our cruise began in the United States, then went to Canada, and then returned to a US port midway through the cruise, 
we had to go through U.S. immigration on our visit to Bar Harbor. Royal Caribbean made the process quite simple. If you had a cruise line tour excursion booked, they would escort you first through the customs process and then onto your tour. If you were going on your own or didn't book an excursion through Royal Caribbean, you got a time to report for customs, interview process, and then could go on your way. Think of it like when your luggage is ready for you to disembark the ship after the cruise. Now, I was expecting a super slow and backed up process, but it went really, really quick. Walk through the main dining room, show your passport when it was your turn and go on your way. In nearly all cases, the agents just waved you through. The best part of this was because we had gone through the immigration process in Bar Harbor, we didn't have to go through it again at the end of the cruise in Boston. So we literally walked to the ship and out the door. Speaking of the ports, it's really surprising how close the ship docks to the towns you visit on a Canada and New England cruise. In most towns, you're gonna dock downtown and be able to walk right into the town and explore it. This is really different than many ports in the Caribbean or Europe where ships dock much further away. That means you can easily do things quicker without much transit time. While Royal Caribbean offers tours to many popular activities, you really can do many of things on your own because you're already downtown to begin with. In fact, the hop on hop off buses that visit places like the summit of Cadillac Mountain or the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic in Halifax are really easy ways to get around any of these towns. Acadia National Park is only 1.3 miles from downtown Bar Harbor, and you can also walk around the Halifax waterfront quite easily. You'll find towns very walkable and easy to explore on your own, so don't assume you need to have a short excursion booked in order to get to the most popular activities. Something else I fell in love with about this region is the beer selection there. I love a good craft beer, and Nova Scotia and Maine had so many great choices. No matter which port we visited, almost any restaurant would have at least a half dozen local brews to choose from on their menu. If you went to a bar, there was a nearly overwhelming selection of local beers, and I loved it. Royal Caribbean's onboard beer selection is pretty underwhelming, especially if you like hoppier beers like I do. So the next time I go on this itinerary, I'm gonna be very tempted to skip an unlimited beverage package because I'd much rather spend that money enjoying beers around the port. In case you're wondering, the Tubular IPA by Dorono Brewing Company was my top choice during the sailing. If all this has you thinking maybe it's time to try a Canada New England cruise, I would really recommend you try a longer sailing. While the four and five night cruises are cheap and easy to hop on, they usually visit just one or two ports and it may leave you feeling disappointed that you didn't get the full experience. By picking a seven night or even longer Canada and New England cruise, you'll forget to visit more ports in both Maine and Canada and have access to more of the must see sites this region is really known for. If you really want the best one and done itinerary, try the open jaw sailings between Quebec and New York that visits ports throughout Northeast Canada and Maine. Not everyone can make a week long cruise work scheduling wise, but if you're teetering on which cruise to book, I would definitely lean towards a longer sailing. In terms of temperature, if you take an early or midsummer cruise, you're gonna find very comfortable temperatures during your sailing. Cruises in June, July, and August will be more comfortable out, and that means you'll wanna spend more time outdoors at lobster and clam bakes, whale watching, or sightseeing on the ocean. August is probably going to be the warmest month of the Canada and New England cruise season, with it being ideal for beach visits and pool time on board. The downside of cruising to Canada and New England over the summer though, is that it's the peak part of the season and there's gonna be multiple cruise ships in each port along with you and plenty of land tours to contend with. In addition, there's no fall leaf colors to see in the summertime. So if you prefer warmer temperatures over anything else, the summer is the way to go. But if fall foliage is important to you, well then going on a cruise in September or October is when you wanna go because this is the time of year that the autumn feel and color of the leaves will be present. It's nearly impossible to know exactly when leaves will be at their peak when you book a cruise like a year in advance, but it certainly won't be earlier than September. Depending on how much rain the region gets, along with how hot summer is, that will determine when leaves start changing. You risk going when leaves haven't changed yet or get there after they're mostly on the ground. It's kind of a gamble in that part. That being said, the best month for leaf peeping is October, although you're more likely to encounter colder temperatures and rain in October. And my last tip about a Canada New England cruise is to skip Peggy's Cove. I know this sounds crazy, but despite being an iconic symbol of the region, you're better off skipping Peggy's Cove in Nova Scotia. I'm sure some will take umbrage with this tip, but the problem with Peggy's Cove is it gets overrun with tourists and it will take you about an hour to get there from Halifax. It's really more of a scenic stop than a destination. Instead, you should go to Lunenburg, which is a great place to explore while your ship is in Halifax. It's downtown as UNESCO World Heritage Site and there's a fish market that overlooks the harbor and has great seafood. Before you skip Halifax completely though, make sure you explore the waterfront. It has a lovely board arc with shops, 
restaurants, and great views. And you can walk there from your cruise ship, so no need to book anything special. So there's a look at what surprised me the most about going on a Canada and New England cruise and some tips and advice on how to take best advantage of it. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning on taking a cruise to this region and what your best tip is for visiting Canada or New England. While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way YouTube will let you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.